In this video, we explore Google Cloud's new cloud service mesh offering, which represents the next generation of Traffic Director. You can think of it as a combination of Traffic Director and Anthos Service Mesh, bringing together the best features of both services. This new offering seamlessly integrates with multiple Google Cloud services, including Kubernetes Engine, Compute Engine, and the serverless Cloud Run platform. Further, it provides both a fully managed control plane and a fully managed data plane to significantly ease adoption. CSM provides standard service mesh benefits and features like fine-grained control over routing, service discovery, and service security. In this demonstration, we'll do some basic setup and show how to integrate multiple runtime environments. We begin with Kubernetes by navigating to the Kubernetes engine service. Since we're working with a new project, our first step is enabling the Kubernetes engine API. After the API is enabled, we navigate to the clusters page to create a new cluster. For this setup, we select a standard cluster to have more detailed control options. While we keep most default settings, we make two important changes. First, to reduce costs, we switch to a zonal cluster. Second, in the Features page, we make sure to select Enable Service Mesh. This selection is crucial because it automatically performs three important tasks. It enables the Mesh API, enables workload identity, and adds the cluster to a fleet. All of these components are essential for creating a robust service mesh environment. Before proceeding with cluster creation, it's worth noting an important detail about pricing. While Cloud Service Mesh comes free with the enterprise tier of Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, you don't need to have the enterprise tier to use this feature. You can use it as a standalone service though there will be some associated costs. After confirming these settings, we create the cluster. This action does two things simultaneously. It provisions the cluster and sets up Cloud Service Mesh on it. Once our Service Mesh is enabled, we move to the Traffic Director service to continue our setup. Our next step involves using the kubectl client to deploy to the mesh. First, we authenticate with the cluster. Then we need to set up sidecar injection in a namespace. Looking at our environment, we can see several namespaces, including the Istio system namespace. For this demonstration, we will enable sidecar injection specifically for the default namespace using the kubectl label command, setting istio injection equals enabled. To verify that our sidecar injection is working correctly, we deploy a simple Nginx container as a test application. When we examine the deployment, we see exactly what we want, two containers running in the pod. One is our Nginx container, and the other is the sidecar. This confirms that the sidecar injection is functioning properly. The significance of this setup is that our application traffic can now be managed through the service mesh. After successfully setting up our Kubernetes services, we move on to integrating Compute Engine into our mesh. We approach this integration from two perspectives, first as a client and then as a service provider. To integrate Compute Engine as a client, we start by creating a Compute Engine instance template 
using the gclog command. Two settings are critical here. We must enable the service proxy and specify which mesh to use. We check the name of our mesh, which was automatically created during our Kubernetes cluster setup, and use that in our configuration. It's important to note that this step must be performed through the command line interface, or CLI, as the console doesn't yet support this option. Once we have our template, we create a new Compute Engine VM based on it. Now we've created a data plane integrated client that can communicate with services in our Kubernetes cluster. Next, we demonstrate how to integrate Compute Engine services into our mesh. We create a new VM, keeping most default settings but making two important changes. We enable HTTP traffic and add a startup script. This script serves two purposes. It installs and starts an Apache web server and creates an HTML page. This setup simulates a web service that will integrate with our mesh. For optimal performance, we place this VM in the US Central 1C zone to keep our resources co-located. However, it's worth noting that the power of this service mesh extends beyond a single region. You can create a global mesh that includes multiple clusters, Compute Engine VMs, and serverless services across various Google Cloud regions. After our instance is created, we need to add it to an instance group. We create an unmanaged instance group, which means we won't implement advanced features like auto-scaling. We maintain the co-location for performance benefits, select our unmanaged VM, and set up the necessary port mapping. Returning to the Cloud Service Mesh page, where we can see our original eight services, we create a new service. We name it HTTP server and select our newly created unmanaged instance group. The system automatically populates the port we specified earlier. As part of the setup, we also need to configure a health check. We create an HTTP health check that monitors the root path on port 80. After reviewing and confirming our configuration, we create the service. This process effectively creates a new service that our mesh can direct traffic to, specifically our Compute Engine VM running the Apache web server. For production environments, it's recommended to use an infrastructure as code platform, such as Terraform, to set up these networking structures in your service mesh. This approach provides better consistency and maintainability. One of the most powerful aspects of this service mesh is its flexibility. You can incorporate services from other cloud providers, such as AWS, into your architecture. This capability enables you to create a truly comprehensive service mesh that spans multiple regions, multiple clouds, and multiple runtime environments.
If you'd like to support the channel, consider starting a free trial of our new design tool, which is linked in the description, and let us know what you think. We'll include a link to the diagram file in the description as well. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section and we'll do our best to respond. Thank you very much for watching to the end and please enjoy responsibly.